Hello and welcome to Let's Talk NRM, our monthly program on natural resource management. This comes to you from MBMA, the Meghalaya Basin Management Agency, under the CLEM program, the Community-Led Landscape Management Project. In any field of work, perhaps there are two approaches. One is the academic approach, and the other is innovation. Innovation often takes work much farther and much quicker. NESFAS has been a beneficiary of the innovation fund of the CLEM program. Today we are here at the NESFAS office and we are here to talk to the founder of NESFAS, Baprang Roy. We'd like to know more about the utilization of the innovation fund and what new innovations have been brought about and how this has really gone into the community to improve the livelihoods of every individual where they have been working. Hello, Baprang. Welcome to Let's Talk in RM. We really wanted to know from you, what was the motivation behind starting NESFAS? And you have always stressed on uh, working with marginalized communities. Why is it so important to listen to the marginalized communities, particularly in terms of their practices, particularly in terms of their knowledge systems? Thank you very much, Rahul. Uh, that's a great question. A nation uh, is formed on three major pillars, of which two pillars are always taken into account, and the third pillar is always forgotten. Pillar number one is, of course, the state, and the pillar number two are the markets. Both these are, receive the necessary attention uh, in nation building. But the third pillar, which is community, is often forgotten, and yet it's a pillar that is extremely important. In, particularly in these hills where we live in, communities form a very important part because communities bring values, and the value systems which we talk about a lot uh, in NESFAS, but also which we gain from communities, is the value of giving and sharing. And the other aspects that in market building that we undertake, we very often speak about wealth creation, but very little do we speak about the distribution of that wealth. In a community setup in its traditional form, when it is not hijacked by the other two pillars, communities have an inclusive attitude where everyone has a fair share of the natural resources that are around, and as a result of which, we have an important distribution. So in NESFAS, what we are trying to do is to look at the assets that we have as a community and to build upon them. So the knowledge systems and the culture, so where do these knowledge systems come in into NESFAS? We have in our landmass a variety of soils and a variety of uh, of regions, and that diversity is extremely uh, important. And people have survived over thousands of years and have learned how to inculcate that knowledge and how to use it in a way that is important on a landscape level. And that is where the knowledge has come from. Uh, and I think that's something that we cannot neglect. The, the diversity is because of that and no knowledge from outside can be inputted here without taking into account the very unique creation of these areas. Let's come to another festival that you all have been observing from uh, NESFAS for a long time, May Remu. So what is the relevance of this and uh, what is, has been the achievements through this uh, particular celebration? I think May Remu festival was initiated to enjoy tasty food that is locally produced. One of our first meetings took place in Maoflang. And I think it was in Maoflang when a group of women came to us when uh, we were chatting. And they said, you know, you talk a lot uh, about uh, good food systems. But in our area, and this was near Maoflang, and people who came mainly were from Cherapunji area, uh, they said that millet is a crop that has bound us together, that has given us energy to climb those uh, cliffs, etc. 
but yet we are losing and nobody's paying attention. So we started working with communities on millets, you know, and, and then we tried to improvise and innovate. And today I'm very happy, especially this year when we are having the International Year of the Millet, that that work that was done there has spread quite a bit. I'm looking forward to working closely with uh, MBDA and other organizations to spread this knowledge. What are the major achievements and the major innovations NESPAS has been able to achieve under the CLEM program, the Community-Led Landscape Management Project? In the work that we're doing, we had a, a learning circle where how can we learn from communities, but how can we bring innovations from science? And I think uh, NESPAS has done some very interesting work, but these works were pockets in one village and the other. It was MBDA that came and brought the idea that you need a more landscape approach. And that is also consistent with the ethos of the people because people, they speak about landscape and then within the landscape, what are the different systems that, uh, that we have. The, the landscape work that is being done by MBDA uh, has been one very important emphasis and I'm glad that the World Bank uh, has done this, and I'm, I hope that MBDA with NESFAS will convince the World Bank that this is actually an inherent knowledge here that could be spread elsewhere. And that knowledge system could help us to influence, and hopefully the bank will come here building upon more the traditions and how science and local knowledge can combine what you now call an intercultural approach to knowledge. One is the agroecology schools where farmers get together. Uh, we would like not to just replicate what others have, have done, but to pick the best aspect. And therefore we coined the term, the agroecology learning centers, bringing farmers, particularly women, to play an important role. We started first with the idea of looking at pest management. And we had someone who from Korea who came and helped us to develop different systems on pest management by communities. And they, he was surprised at the knowledge that local people have of how they could try to control pests in their own ways. And, and this is using natural material? And using natural material. He came up with the idea uh, of of having uh, a zoo for uh, insects uh, as one way uh, to learn. And from these actions, then we work with communities to look at various aspects. The two important aspects, we're looking at seeds. What seeds were being lost? What seeds do they uh, keep? And we brought in other people who, who came in. We looked at soils. You know, and then the farmers themselves would, would experiment on their fields and see what are in the soil the pests that they have and how from traditional knowledge they could bring about. So those innovations uh, were tried and they worked. Uh, and then when the, when the project came from, from uh, MBDA, the idea was how do you strengthen these ALCs? either in them exchanging ideas among themselves or in deepening their knowledge or in spreading or also in recording that knowledge that is there so that we can then cross fertilize amongst ourselves. We also found that, uh, for example, some farmers were using eggshells and saying that to control the pests, but actually the crops grew but it wasn't because they were controlling pests, but because eggshells contained calcium and that soil didn't have calcium. So we corrected also their views in that. Right. The, what uh, NESFAS was doing at the beginning was in rather sporadic in the villages that they were working. And there was no way that NESFAS could have spread this on a landscape. It was discussing with MBDA that we saying, how do you handle these small innovations at a field level to become important steps, not to be re replicated everywhere, but to be appropriately 
introduced in the areas and to save the landscape uh, from this aspect. It was in those discussions that issues like climate change, etc., were slowly, slowly uh, being understood. At the end, uh, we'd love to listen to a success story from all these years of working uh, with Nesvas and in the villages with the people. One of the success stories of of, uh, of NESFAS uh, is partnership building. I think uh, unlike other non-governmental organizations who go gang-ho on a vision, uh, NESFAS has been a listener to the government, has been a listener to the international bodies, and but above all, a listener to the communities. I would say the biggest strength of the work we've done so far is the communities trusted us. And they trusted us because of one major principle that was adopted by NESFAS is whatever we do, uh, it has to be a free, prior and informed consent. The second success is that we do not want the communities uh, to be our agents to implement our programs. We don't romanticize indigenous knowledge. We respect, we but we also see the role where science and modern governance system can build, but not making sure that we do not make the communities to be only an instrument of the state, of the market, or of NESFAS. Wonderful talking to you. It's been such a pleasure. And uh, there you heard it. You don't have to go bang ho. You can do your work quietly and yet make it effective. Thank you, Rahul. I enjoyed talking and chatting with you. And I also wish you and MBDA uh, a great success. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. So there you are. You just heard it from Bob Prang Roy. To do good, innovative work, you don't have to scream from the rooftops. It can be calm, it can be quiet, and yet it can be effective. The innovation that NESFAS has been doing over the years has benefited communities and at the same time keeping in mind sustainability and benefit reaching to the masses. We'll join you again with another episode next month on our program, Let's Talk NRM.